Hey everybody, welcome to the Dream Team Show live right here on RVN TV. I am your host, Kasia Roxas. We have Jay Armsbaugh with us today from QGASM. Mm -hmm. And this is a really exciting interview because I could not wait to talk about all this stuff. QGASM is such an awesome and brilliant name as we were talking yeah. right before we started the show. How did you come up with that name? Um, we, the uh, Food Network always says foodgasm is right. when, when the food is really good. And my ex-wife had come up said we ought to do something with that with barbecue. We tried a few variations. Uh, we actually tried barbecue gasm and a few other things, but QGASM flowed better and it worked better with other people looking at it. So uh, we came up with that. Um, I'm in the process of trademarking that for food, apparel, and a few other things. Um, but I've had several uh, promoters tell me that it is the best name in competition it is, barbecue. It is a brand, you're branding yourself, right. which is right. absolutely amazing. And mm. the whole part of it, there's so many different nuances here with what mm. you do. Right. Uh, the initial part of what you do is we met through our Latip group. Right. Um, and of course, when you came on board, I was kind of like barbecue cleaning. Mm. Like, you know, who would ever think about utilizing your service to clean a barbecue and of course we've had so many stories mm -hmm. so what I want to know is tell me a little bit about that first before we start talking about the barbecue and stuff because that's gonna make me hungry and I'm gonna want to like jump out of here and go eat so tell me a little bit about this business that, that you've started right. for yourself I was looking for something to do I got laid off from my job in December and I was looking for something to do in the barbecue world um, and this is something it's a little less investment it's uh, authorized agent of the barbecue cleaner out of Hackensack New Jersey I'm their 197th authorized agent. So uh, there's no- In the no entire state? In the entire country. Okay. Uh, nobody else in the barbecue cleaning business has more than 10. Um, so I looked into it. They're affiliated with the Kansas City Barbecue Society. I'm a member of the board of directors of the Kansas City Barbecue Society. I had no idea that Barbecue Society even existed. Right. <laughs> Somebody has to sanction those wow. six, five to 700 contests every year. Um, so I looked into it. Um, and the, part of the reason is, I looked at it, it got interested is, it's a god awful dirty business that nobody wants to do. Yeah. And I'm familiar with a lot of the grills out there already. I've been around barbecue since I was 19, um, when I first ate barbecue in Tennessee after I got lost. Really? That was when I first came in contact with barbecue. My friend Ron and I were trying to head to Miami Beach. We got lost in Tennessee and found a barbecue place. Very first time I ever had it. I've been hooked okay. on barbecue ever since. I guess uh, if you're going to run into a barbecue joint, it's, it's down in Tennessee, Tennessee is the place to do it. Really great place. <laughs> yeah. uh, we ate a combination plate and then we both said, we're going to do it again. And we ate another one right away um, and kept going. And I've been in and out of trying to do my own barbecue over the years, usually not spending enough money to get a really good smoker. Um, but uh, it's just, it was something that was in my blood, so I looked into this. Um, there's a lot of very expensive grills in New Jersey. Right, because that's what, essentially, we really want to try to keep these things clean, right? right. Wow, these Part grills of can be up two, three thousand dollars. Uh, there's a built-in grill. A lot of the ones in New Jersey are way more than that. Right. Six to ten thousand is very common. Right. Even freestanding grills can be six thousand, ten thousand dollars natural gas or even propane anymore. There's a lot of very expensive grills. Even a, a Weber is can be $2,000 easy. So you've got a lot of investment. And when you talk about um, the, the cleaning part of it, which is, it's very intricate because mm -hmm. we've talked about that. Um, mm. When people are cooking on their grill consistently and they're not cleaning it properly, tell us what can happen. Well, you see, one of the big things that you can get is bugs, rodents, will start invading your grill. Um, carbon builds up, everything starts to rust and corrode, and your, the life of your investment is going to be dra dramatically shortened. Not to mention the nastiness that's, that's the on nastiness, the grill. The nastiness, right. <laughs> you're getting stuff. I was vacuuming out a grill the other day that had clamshells, chicken bones, and everything else. When me, he had meat fall through the grates, he left it in there. <sighs> so you've got this chicken rotting in the bottom of the grill. So that was all cleaned out. I, um, Hey, I've had grills with eight inches of stuff piled up in the bottom that people are cooking over and over and over again. People that haven't cleaned a grill in the four years they've owned it. And when we start cleaning them, we can tell that their parts are, are just dissolving because of the corrosion. I mean, I've found holes in grills, um, parts that just literally have to be taken out of service. Sure. Um, I've done other things, like I've done cleanups on brand new grills that were rodent damaged. People buy from a friend, 
the grill gets rodent damaged. I've spent 10, 12 hours sanitizing an entire grill. Have you ever gone to somebody's property and to, to do a job and looked at the grill and said, you know what, buddy, you got to get a new grill? because yes. it's that bad. I mean, I, I can imagine that you show up to these jobs and you're kind of like, you know, looking at this thing going, you know what? It's going to be so much easier if you buy a new one. <laughs> uh, I showed up to one place where the burners literally weren't hanging onto anything and the entire bottom of the grill was rotted out and he had put new hinges on the grill trying to hold it together, but it wasn't sealing right. Uh, there was a hole in the gas line and it's like, that's it. I can't do it. I don't want to take liability for cleaning it and somebody thinking it's okay. Right. So that one I've skipped. I've skipped others in an online interview when we go through what's wrong. Um, I literally will say, have it repaired first and then we'll talk about cleaning it. But when somebody gives me a laundry list of problems with the grill and says, will cleaning solve that? Probably not. Right. I mean, some igniter issues will, we can resolve if they're clean, but most of the time the igniters need to be replaced, and we do not do any repairs. That's a requirement. I was just going to ask you that question. Along with the cleaning portion of what QGASM does, you guys don't do any repair work or anything like that on the barbecue No, system. because that's part of my agreement with the barbecue cleaner. We're not allowed to do any repairs. They don't want us getting in there, especially if we don't have enough knowledge. Some of these grills literally need an awful lot of knowledge to take them apart. Um, a decor or a Lynx grill may have 150, 250 parts. Right. And if once they've sat for a while, when you try to take them apart, things are just going to start breaking. And that's a lot to, that's actually a, a whole lot to clean, I would right. imagine. I mean, there, I mean there's going to be times when you're there for what, three, four, five hours? The longest uh, I've done so far is four. Um, the guy I trained with has uh, somebody that has six foot custom made gas grills, six foot by two and a half. And to do three of them in a four burner range takes him two and a half days. Because you're a one man operation. I'm one man. You do all of this work on your own, especially in this heat. And we talked about that right. before we went on air. How many bottles of Gatorade that you had to drink last yeah. week for, for cleaning the, just one grill? Right. I had to drink eight bottles of Gatorade in three hours in 96 or 97 degree heat. So now, when it's. Next to a saltwater pool. Well, you know, it was funny because I was thinking to myself when we were talking before, I'm like, if you're doing two or three jobs a day mm -hmm. out in this heat right now, I mean that's that's got to be a lot of that's got to be a lot of work on you. It is. I'm, I've lost a lot of late weight over the years as it is. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I think I told you one time I dropped 165 pounds in the yeah. last five years. I dropped 10 pounds last week. Wow. So just from working out in the heat. So yeah. it's a, it's a, it's good for my diet. How plan. far do you travel to to clean? You know, when you get different jobs, is there anybody that's too far for you? Um, the farthest I've gone so far is 85 miles from Little Egg Harbor. Okay, because that's where you live, down in Little Egg. Right. And I can imagine that especially right now, after the summer is over, um, you're gonna probably get some more phone calls before people are gonna winterize their grills, which right. when we come back from break, I wanna talk about the system that you have set in place mm -hmm. that utilizes this, uh, the cleaning that you do, because right. I don't, it's very important that you don't use any chemicals right. when you're cleaning uh, these grills. So, when we come back from break, we're going to talk to Jay a little bit more about uh, QGASM and some barbecue mm -hmm. and how to clean your grill. We'll be right back. Did you see the sign? When I needed to jumpstart sales. Build attendance for an event. Help people find their way. Fast Signs designed new directional signage. And got them back on track. Get started at FastSigns.com. Hey everyone, this is Donna Valente, sales performance and leadership coach and founder of the Enterprise Sales Institute. Join me every Wednesday at 11 o'clock here with RBN TV on That Sales Show. On this show, we are going to share with you best practices in emotional intelligence, sales process, and sales strategy with some of the industry's biggest thought leaders. So, don't forget, 11 o'clock Wednesday here with RBN TV and That Sales Show. Got a quarter?
Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dream Team Show Live right here on RVN TV. I am your host, Kasia Roxas. We're talking to Jay Amsbaugh about uh, mm. Qgasm and how it's such a dirty job. We mm. love that name. I let it mm. rolls off my tongue a little bit easier mm. than normal. Um, so before we went to break, we started to talk about you know the, the different types of, of jobs that you have. But I want you to explain to everybody the process okay. and why it is important to clean the grill the way that you do it. The process we use is um, patented by a company called Oven U out of Great Britain. It was uh, originally developed there um, just to clean people's household ovens. They really don't have many barbecues over there, so it was patented for that. Um, the barbecue cleaner company that I'm an agent of, they are the sole person group allowed to sell that process in the U.S. through us. It's all natural. Uh, our materials. So safety. no chemicals at all. In no anything ca chemicals. That Actually, it's every, all called materials. We use an all-natural degreaser. We have a steam tank uh, with a salt-based product that we put in the uh, racks, flavorizer bars, grease pans, anything that's made of steel. We can't put aluminum in there. The stuff will actually dissolve the aluminum, but it's natural. We put it in the steam tank for 90 minutes to two hours. Uh, then when it's done, it literally could run over it with a um, stainless steel pad and everything pretty much falls off. So it's like off. a Stanley steamer for your barbecue, right. basically, so, is yeah, what it is. Yeah, I have a propane burner underneath, heats up the tank. Um, when we go to do your grill, we put tarps underneath the grill so we don't get anything on your deck. Um, then we take the, the loose parts, put them outside. Then we start cleaning with a uh, mixture of water and our all-natural degreaser. It's all elbow grease. Yeah. I'm developing more muscles at I my age say, than, I've, boy, than I, I've had in a long time. I mean, I gotta say that doing all that cleaning and everything is, is definitely right. is definitely gonna make you work out. Right. We have a picture of what it looks yeah. like uh, for the before right. and after that Brett's gonna pull up for us. And yeah. I, I really think that when you actually take a look at the before picture, right. explain to everybody what's going on there in that picture. Right, what you see there is uh, the inside with all the racks and the flavorizer bars out, you see the six burners. And then underneath that's the uh, grease pan and everything that's fallen down in there. This one's actually a fairly clean grill. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's relatively new. It's like a year, two years old. One of the newer ones I've done. So it doesn't have a lot of things that are baked on or anything else. And we vacuum that out. And then we scrub down all the sides with this uh, degreaser. Okay. We, we put a degreaser on it. We uh, go back and forth with, from sm uh, large to smaller tools till we get clean. And then afterwards, there we go. Look at that. You see that? That's amazing. It's very, very clean. That's where everything builds up. That's yeah. the part of the grill you never see. And I don't think that's the thing. I don't really think people actually take notice to that. Like right. I have, uh, we have a good friend of ours, Mike Keating, that we work with, mm -hmm. and he grills constantly. Mm -hmm. um, and and I know Ben and and Matt uh, mm -hmm. from our group also had mm -hmm. utilized your services right. over the past couple weeks. Tell me the brush story, because the brush story, I think, is extremely important when you're trying to explain about the cleaning mm -hmm. process here and why you, they shouldn't be using these types of brushes. Well, a lot of people use, still use wire brushes to clean the, the grills. I use some wire brushes, but I use some sturdier ones, plus we make sure that there's nothing left over afterwards. But it's very easy with a wire brush to get one stuck in your grill. And there's been several thousand reported injuries at uh, emergency rooms for wire people who have ingested wire brushes. A lot of them are kids. They either get stuck mouth or throat, or even worse, in the stomach or in the intestines, and then there's major surgery. It's just not a risk I want to take with my kids, and I've been using a wood paddle to clean my grill for years. You take a wood paddle, it's got a straight edge on it, just looks like a tiny boat oar about this long, and you start cleaning your grill when it's hot. And the more you clean it, the deeper the grooves get, and the better it cleans. Now, like Ben's been using his for a long time and he's got really deep grooves in his paddle so it cleans his whole grate the more you get down in there. So, I mean, he's being very safe. And I tell that to everybody I talk to, use these wood paddles. Um, I know there's people that use an onion and a paper towel, which is supposed to work. It doesn't get very far down in. It just gets you a little bit off the surface. It doesn't kind get the like surface. Kind of like seasoning an iron skillet a right. little bit, you know? I mean, the process of, of cleaning out, you can't use soap because the soap will, well, will eat the porous and it'll sit in there. And then if you cook something, so you're just supposed to wipe it out with a paper towel. Some racks are made of steel and are round. Some are stainless steel and round. Those are good. One of the things people don't do, you need to flip them over and clean them again. 
because a lot of stuff hangs down. hangs down on the bottom. I mean, I found grow grates with six inches of stuff hanging off the bottom. Right. People clean the top, but don't clean the bottom. Um, cast iron grill grates, there's a lot of those. You have to season them just like a cast iron pan. So when I clean them, all the seasoning come in the steam tank, all the seasoning comes off, and they have to go and re-season them before. I tell them to re-season them as soon as they can. Okay, so, so the, grates, the grates really, I mean, people can go out and buy new grates, really. On right? some, some of these more expensive grills, it may cost you $600 to buy a new set of grates. I didn't realize they were that expensive. Yeah, so you don't, you want to keep them going. Um, I cleaned a grill not long ago that was 18 years old and still has the original grates on it. Wow, no kidding. And she's been having somebody clean it uh, twice a year for 18 years. And that's what I was going to ask you. What do you recommend uh, for cleaning services as far as the grill, like maybe before the season starts, after the season is over? If you're going to do a before or after, do the after because you don't want it sitting all winter with that stuff on it because it's just going to corrode and you're, you're going to shorten the life of your grill. So I'm, I'm already booking a lot of stuff in late September and October right now to so people can have end of season. I'll be doing end of season grill cleanings uh, right up to Thanksgiving week, maybe the week after. Because people usually, typically, some people grill during the winter time too. I grill and smoke all year round. <laughs> I've, when I buy new smokers, I test them out over the winter. Um, the last time I bought one, I was in February. It was 30 degrees out with a 40 mile an hour wind, and I was outside with a smoker. I'll tell you, that's, there's something to be said about that. You know, yeah. when you're when you're just an avid cooker and you yeah. just like to, to make like this, this gentleman friend of ours, uh, Mike, that we were just yeah. talking about. He cooks grills every single day, yeah. like every single day. He's one of those customized, uh, mm -hmm. you know, built-in, you know, it looks like the size of a kitchen table, mm -hmm. this thing. I mean, that, I mean that's got to that's take a lot of time when you have to clean something like that, of that capacity. Well, I have a lot to clean. I have four 55-gallon drum smokers, a 30-gallon drum smoker. I have a, a C4 grill, which looks like a little ammo can from M Grills in Texas. Um, then I have my Weber kettle. And then I have an FEC 100 commercial smoker, which will hold 16 pork shoulders at one oh time. Oh, my God. And I have a uh, gas grill, a KitchenAid gas grill, which went through Hurricane Sandy. I'm still trying to <laughs> rebuild. That's kind of my project grill. My wife says I can't bring any more home. <laughs> it's kind of like it's kind of yeah. like, like getting stray dogs, right? Like right. after a while, you're not allowed to bring any more pets home, right? Yeah. Because you're like, all of a sudden, you got nine girls, you got nine cats, ten yeah. dogs. So. Right. When we come back from break, we're going to talk about your barbecuing stuff because okay. that's really what I want to hear about. You do competition barbecue, what we were just talking about with your smokers. We're going to talk a little bit about that when we get back because I know that you are, you are doing major competitions and, and you've yeah. been winning a lot, of, a lot of stuff. There's a lot of accolades right. here to talk about. So yeah. when we come back from break, we're going to talk more to Jay about some barbecuing and QCASM. Be right back. RV you see the sign. When I needed to jumpstart sales. Build attendance for an event. Help people find their way. Fast Signs designed new directional signage. And got them back on track. Get started at FastSigns.com. Hey everyone, this is Donna Valente, sales performance and leadership coach and founder of the Enterprise Sales Institute. Join me every Wednesday at 11 o'clock here with RVN TV on that sales show. On this show, we are going to share with you best practices in emotional intelligence, sales process, and sales strategy with some of the industry's biggest thought leaders. So, don't forget, 11 o'clock Wednesday, here with RVN TV and that sales show. Got a quarter? Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dream Team Show live right here on RVN TV. I am your host, Kasia Roxas, chatting with Jay Amsbaugh from uh, Q QGASM. Again, it rolls off the tongue very mm -hmm. easily. Um, I love the talk about the barbecue. Mm -hmm. I'm the kind of girl that buys a steak, I marinate it in mm -hmm. some pineapple juice, some teriyaki, and I throw it on the grill and I cook it. I know that you have your own special rubs, spices, right. all kinds of stuff. I want to talk about the foodgasm part now. Mm -hmm. Talk about the stuff that you love to make, what you do when you prepare it. Give me a little bit of background on that. Um, I think we kind of hit on it earlier. I first ate 
barbecue when I was 19, kind of got hooked on it. I was from Ohio or, and, and moved to Indianapolis, and we were traveling to Florida. You're a Buckeyes fan, are you? Oh, oh, I can't say anything. Talking to a Michigan girl, I don't know. I still got a lot of <laughs> relatives in Ohio. That's where the Ams balls pretty much are all from. But uh, it was just kind of the first time I ate it, it was just, to me, amazing. Delectable, almost. Yeah, because I grew up eating a lot of bland food. Right. And as I got older, started finding you know Mexican food and then barbecue and things. And But barbecue stuck with me, and I was into it on and off for you know the past 40 years. About uh, 12 years ago, I got bigger into it, trying to make it myself, bought a bunch of different kinds of smokers that were cheap, trying to go into the cheap way instead of the good way. And then about seven years ago, uh, I joined a, a, a website called Pellet Heads, which they have pellet, uh, into pellet smokers. I'd never heard of them. And one of the guys was going to do a barbecue competition, and he wanted one guy for each meat at a KCBS contest. So I volunteered for ribs, didn't even have my smoker and hadn't really done anything with it. And this was in Virginia for the competition. I cooked 90 racks of ribs in practice. Oh my God. Uh, we went crazy, went down there, had a handicapped scooter rack and put my smoker on it to haul it down there. And we got down there and we were like fifth from the bottom out of 70 plus teams. Tuffy Stone from Barbecue Pitmasters was yeah, there. Yeah, I remember him. Yeah, First I've time I've met job. him. I've yeah, met yeah. him a few times since then. He does call me a suck up now, but you know, <laughs> that's okay. Um, <laughs> So I got there, that kind of you know, got me, and then uh, a month after that, uh, did my first competition on my own in Seaside uh, at um, Q by the Sea, and uh, took everything down in two cars. And you're, so, you're so passionate about it, which I love. When you talk I've, about the cooking. I love to cook anything. I yeah. cook everything at home. I'm into doing sous vide now. Um, you know, you can sous vide. I need to clone you because I, I hardly ever cook, and yeah. that's because I'm out all the time. But I need to clone you so that I can. <laughs> so last night we had a confetti salad, which was a whole bunch of hard vegetables uh, in small chop. Looks like um, confetti, bright confetti, sous vide pork loin, sliced thin, and it was grilled at the end, and then with a bacon horseradish cream sauce on the top. Talk to me about your signature rub that you use on the meat? Um, we have the Qgasm rub, which I'd eventually like to market. Uh, it's kind of expensive. It's about $25,000 worth of front-loaded costs. But we came up with a Texas-style rub. And last year was the very first time we used it. We got first place in brisket um, in, uh, in, in uh, Pennsylvania, or Maryland, I'm sorry. And because they have these competitions all over the place. Yeah, there's, travel everywhere. there's one every weekend if you want to go this time of year. Depends on how far you want to go. Um, and so we've kept at it. We've got a n numerous top tens in brisket. Uh, last year we got seven top tens in a row in chicken doing ten contests. Um, so that's a mixture of commercial rubs. But the brisket rub is so good on beef and pork. We also got first place steak at the New Jersey Steak Championships last year. With they, our have brisket a champ they have a New Jersey Steak Championship cook-off? Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes, most of the uh, barbecue competitions. I'm learning so much from you today, just so you know. Because most, I, I mean, if I'm looking for barbecue, I'm finding you first. <laughs> the governor gives a proclamation, statewide proclamation. Basically, any competition with more than 25 teams is a state championship. Okay. Uh, but this, it was the same for the state. We got a proclamation for the state state championship. It's not going to be held this year. Um, there was some problems uh, with the hotel in Atlantic City, so they're going to hold it next year. So nobody's going to take it away from you this year. That's great. Um, but it was the first one held in New Jersey. Uh, there haven't been any others held since, so I'm still the New Jersey state state champion. That's unbelievable. And I didn't cook it on a grill. I cooked it on a smoker. Yeah. So t what's the difference between... Talk to me about the smoker. Because I, I've seen smokers. I know what they do. But I know there's a lot of there's a lot of time consumption when it comes to cooking different types of meat. It depends whether you do hot and fast or low and slow. Most guys are still doing low and slow, uh, lower temperatures, uh, 195, 185 up to 250, uh, and offset smokers or pellet smokers, reverse flow, direct flow. Um, I'm doing something newer. I'm doing hot and fast on barrel smokers directly over uh, the fire, just set up. And I'm cooking at 300 degrees and a brisket or a pork shoulder about four to five hours. Wow. Ribs are two hours. Chicken's about an hour and 45 minutes. So we're doing very hot, very fast, and we're getting more awards with that. We're cooking very expensive briskets. We're cooking Wagyu gold grade gonna, briskets. I was actually going to ask you. I actually had uh, Wagyu the other night for the mm. first time. I have never had it before. It is a very interesting 
meat, steak, I mean, it's fattier meat, I guess, and it, the, the, the flavor was amazing. The point on the brisket is way more fatty than you'll see in a steak. Um, regular Wagyu is about four times as fat as prime. Wagyu Gold's four times as fatty as the, the, the black or the basic grade Wagyu. It's all American Wagyu. Comes out of Kansas City from a company called Snake River Farms. Their meat's been amazing. They treat me well. They, you know, if I win, they give me some free stuff usually. Do you usually. have the stuff delivered? Do you have the meat delivered to you from a distributor? For Snake River Farms, yes. For the other stuff, I'm buying the same thing out of the grocery stores. Okay. Um, so I was going to ask you, when, you, when you're choosing to buy the different types of meat that you're, you're mm -hmm. cooking, uh, whether it be at home or whatever the case is, I, I assume that when you're doing your, your competitions, you're buying it from the distributor because it's to higher grade uh, meat for you to use for the competition. Chicken, you're not going to find anything higher. I like uh, Costco chicken. Costco's regular chicken thighs, non-organic, are the best thing I've had to win with. The taste is great, and the, the price is low. Um, I would rather have Smithfield pork, but it's hard to find, so I've been using Swift's Premium from Costco. And that's Costco's like the place. It's got, it, <laughs> they're both Duroc, which is a better grade, much more marbled pork, and it's a red pork because you want a redder pork to cook with because it's tastier. And even on the pork shoulders, you'll see some lighter and darker meat. The darker meat on the shoulders is much better. And here I am walking through the supermarket, and I'm just picking out random stuff out of the, you know, out of the meat section, not even looking for color or texture yeah. or... You want to look at marbling and everything else because um, that's where the flavor is, and you want a lot of that marbling. And even when we're cooking hot and fast, we, in, we also inject flavors into everything except the ribs. Right. So we're putting lots of extra flavor in. Um, we're starting getting ready to do some catering with that. Uh, we'll even cater with a Wagyu brisket if somebody wants to spend that kind of money. We can put that, the menu together. I want, yeah. um, before we end the show today, I want you to tell everybody how to get in touch with you for, number one, for the, the mm. Qgasm cleaning, because I mm. think that's really what we're focusing mm. on here today. But just give them a little an idea mm. how to get in touch with you so they can come and have you mm -hmm. clean their grow. Okay. Tell everybody on the camera. Okay. Uh, the number is 908-763-6196 or Qgasm.com, Q-U-E-G-A-S-M.com. When you get into that website, it'll have uh, two links there, one for the grill cleaning and one for the competition barbecue team. Um, if you want anything a little different, give me a call. We will actually come to your house and teach you how to cook barbecue. That's really, that's, that, that's yeah. the best part. I really wanted you to make sure that you told everybody right. that because there are people like me that just don't cook and, and I would love to learn how to do something like that. So If you want to have 20 of your closest friends over, we will actually bring pop-up tents, tables, smokers, and everything set up at your house and teach you. It's a long day if you want to learn everything. Yeah. We'll either teach you competition barbecue or we will teach you um, back you bar backyard barbecue and we'll teach you some of the combinations, how That's to sous vide, awesome. sous vide and, yeah. and grill, um, how to make a great steak competition-wise. Um, I can make a ribeye better than most restaurants in New Jersey. That's awesome. Um, that, that's always been my issue. I have problems eating at restaurants. Yeah, I, I, would can cook, I would too. I can I, cook I would too. better than a lot of people. I, I would too. But thank you for coming on the yes. show, Jay. It was such a pleasure to have you here. Yeah. It was just mm -hmm. amazing to, to hear about all this different stuff. And uh, guys, if you uh, need to get your grill clean, you got to give Jay a call because this stuff is awesome. I've seen it. We saw the pictures. We've had friends that have utilized his services and... Uh, you know, this is quite fascinating, very educational as well. So you are watching the Dream Team Show live right here on RVN TV. I am your host, Kasha Roxas, and I will see you guys next Tuesday at 1.30.